she lived in Balangundan, not with my mother, but with her sister. As her eldest daughter, which is Javadra. And my, my mother lived in Balangundan and, and Mahalatana with her father. Mr. S.T. Mahalatana was a Ratimata. And my father married and been gone to Binna and came and settled down in Mahalatana. And he got the his father his father in law's job at the Mahatya. Then no could they influence a lot to transfer their jobs from son to uh, son in law and all that. So that's how my father became Rata Mahatya. They are from Kandy. The three Ratwat, three sets of Ratwatis, Bahaya Ratwat, Dumba Ratwatis, and Nagol Ratwatis. And my father gave Mahaya. There are 11 boys in the family. And their mother was Miss Leuka Ratwat. Story is one, one mother, of course, and three. Yes, she had three sons, and they were all, uh, they all went as, uh, what is it, not Tatwat. No, but that's the other part of us. They were all Parnagamas. So she went to the governor then, at that time, and said, I want two of my sons to go as Tatwatas. So she took all the three sons and two were named Tatwat, that was Parnagamas. And my father happened to be Tatwat. My father was a very kind-hearted man, but we were scared of him. He was not that he was hard on him. Anyway, he was a disciplinarian and never allowed us to go about and was very careful that we as younger should not go out. You want to go play tennis? I have to go for tennis. I have to be escorted by somebody, an aunt of mine or somebody, or himself. I used to help him a lot in his work. When he was at the Mahatya during the military epidemic and in the social service work, I used to help him. I was at home, I left school early. I was at home for about five years after I left school. So I was very helpful to him. The strong person I found was my mother, no doubt. She was the one who dominated all of us. More than she was, uh, she had treated a lot of people and cured also. And I used to help her with, uh, with making the medicine. But she never allowed me to take and make the medicine at home. I said they would make it properly. So she had all the equipment for that. She should do it at home. I used to help her with that, you not know, to grind things and pound things and make the mixture. I used to keep some of them patients at home. Now, for instance, a woman came, she so got to pick firewood and got a piece of firewood into her eye. She came with a piece of stick in her eye. My mother pulled it out and kept her there and treated and cured her and I sent her. When she got her father, I don't know. We lived with the old, old gentleman for some time at Mahalatan. Well, it was a primitive area, but beautiful place. Mahal of course, the paddy fields and forest. And there were even elephants are not very far from there because they, my grandfather built, uh, cut up a huge ditch to keep the elephants out. It's still there. That ditch is, of course, now most of it is covered up now, but it's still there. That's to keep wild elephants out. So it was a wild elephant area. Now, of course, it is, uh, there are a lot of villages there, families. So my parents are buried there. because she lost her father there and some two children, she refused to stay there. So we had to come to Balangur. My father's uh, circuit bungalow we can live there and got it improved. School was first time I went to a kindergarten school in Balangur. And some friends of ours run a school. Balasuri, they were a planter's family. I was there for just for a short time, and then from there, I went to Ferguson High School, Ratnapura. For a short time, stayed with the grand aunt of my mother's aunt.
Carter to come in the morning to Bagarai to go with a chaperone in the buggy cart to the school. I enjoyed that. And he's coming in and picked me up. Nans are very nice, very nice. Irish nuns, very kind. Master Gerard, she was one of the oldest there. She died also there. Master Daria was a music teacher. Master Agatha, you must have heard about her. Short lady, yes. Girls used to play the fool of her. <laughs> Muslim teachers, they died over there. Some left the country and went some into other convents, out of the country to Bangalore and uh, some in Far East, Burma. Some of the nuns went, some, one, some went to France. My is between Utunagam, Prince Silva, and uh, this is my friend, she's in Australia now. And Yogamani Yoga Sundaram, they are six in Australia. Out of my friends, they go on away, of course. Those are my close friends in the boarding. I think I was not happy about it. For days I cried. <laughs> it was not too bad. Only were complaining about the food. <laughs> but my mother said, I know why you all are making all this fuss. You can't expect better food than when you are cooking in large quantities. In the way we were grumbling. <laughs> we had to go to church. As boarders, we had to go to church for mass in the early morning, get up at 5 in the morning and go to church. Why? Because they didn't want to leave us alone and go. In the boarding. For fear that somebody might run away or something. One girl did run away. So after that, we had to go to church. We liked it around. Because we should make calls, excuse and stay back. Uh, saying that not well. Otherwise, we had to go to church. We liked it around, especially Sundays and weekdays. No, we, we used to take books and read behind. We sit in the back pew and we take our uh, school books and study there in church. Of course, we got caught. We got it from the lunch. Everything we had to do to time. From the moment you got out of bed, to, uh, you had to go to church as a Catholic. I was not a Catholic, but as a Catholic convent. And from that time on, everything was done to time. Studying, bathing, eating, everything was done. So we were used to discipline. We didn't, of course, we got bad marks. If we were late, they got 10 bad marks. If we were disrespectful, they got 10 bad marks. And then they to totaled those marks and we were punished some way. So I think that discipline really worked in all of us. I am very proud that I, I stayed at the convent and I, I went through that uh, discipline. There's a man called Mr. Nana Akkar from Panadura. He was a VC chairman. He was very close to my husband. He and another gentleman called Mr. Sena Ratna. I didn't dare read it. I was not aware of all that. <laughs> he came alone. He came as Minister of Local Government and Health. He came to see the, visit the clinic. On that pretext, he was brought there. And he had lunch assignment. First time I met him, and a man from a big family in Colombo, in the south. I took I had to think a lot before I decided. My marriage was a happy one. You might ask why. Because my husband was very good to me. He understood me. And I understood him. Some people thought it was difficult. It was not difficult. He understood people. If you understood him, it was easy to live with him. People were wondering how I was living with this man. They thought it was very hard and strict. No. I first came uh, for a homecoming. The homecoming ceremony for that. And uh, we had of course receptions all the way in Natanagar electorate, including Dumpe. About 20 hours receptions on the way. We finished there by the time we came home here up to the gate of nearly 2 o'clock. And we were received there by a procession of the dancers and all that with the staff of the Horgola uh, conducting us to the Valavo. We had to walk up here. And then I came, of course, there was the stately old Sir Solomon Dias Mandanaika, father in law, who stood there and greeted us. Because he's called the son for getting late. <laughs> 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 
He was, of course, very kind, nice to me, <coughs> because I used to go off with my husband my, my own life. But um, I was very scared because his, of his position, Mahamudli and big man, actually I was scared. Of course, he was a different type of man, but he was loved by because he helped the people a lot. You go to any temple in Atanal, they all say, we got tithes from Sir Solomon, we got timber from Sir Solomon. He helped in temples. So he was loved by the people, not only my husband. My husband's great grandfather. Also Bandar Naika, his photograph is upstairs, portrait. He was the one who was asked by the British government to build the candy Abbe Pusar Road. And he had come here to be to find a spot to stay. And he walked down here, it was all forest here. He found a kiri by here. It's the scene is the solemn book also. Remember these studies? And it was an ideal spot to build a house, lucky spot. That's how we build the house here. Theatre called Wentworth, and he lived there. I came there for some years. We were there, then we shifted to Boston Place. He bought this, my father in law bought this, my husband, and we came here. We were born here. No, at Wentworth. She was born, there and so was Chandika, and only Andrew was born in Boston Place. At that, after, after I was born, I was not so lonely. I was doing minor summit work. So I had to go a lot of time for that also. Sometimes I did neglect the children also. I had to because I had to go do this Mahana Samiti work with Mrs. T. L. C. Rajabhaksan crowd. And we used to go out visiting to the villages, which I found very interesting. <coughs> so but I, I mean I neglected and didn't because I had good servants for the children. I had a nanny for one for Sunetra. You know, of course you have problems with the UNP as you know. And he had to get over that. And finally left the UNP because of that. Because I was, was behind it to get out of the UNP, I must say. Because I, I know what uh, DS was doing. He wanted to put his son there. Uh, he thought son should succeed him, not my husband. So he he was all the time encouraging Dudley. In fact, when 19... What was the year that they formed the government? In 1943, I think. He asked for the Ministry of Agriculture, but he said, no, I want to give it to my son Dudley, because I can control it. And he said, and then he, the man said, give me health and local government. So he allowed, he allowed that. So it didn't take him long to form, he left the UNP in 1951. In 51, in September, he formed the SLAP, left in 51 July, the government, and formed the SLAP in September, no, 51, uh, September 3rd. <laughs> because I was held to win his election or that I went around addressing meetings and all that. For the first time in my life, I addressed meetings. Especially his own electorate. Because he had to go out to help the others. After he left the UNP in 52, he had his own party, so he had to help his own party. And as leader, he had to go around. So I, gave, I allowed him to go and I talked to his electorate. And it was Dumpe and Atanagali together. It was a big electorate. But I did it. <laughs> of course, I, I, was, I got carried from the women, rural women, Mahira Samti. I thought if they can speak, why can't I? They are so un uh, not self-conscious at all, the uh, rural women, so I got courage from that. That's how I really started talking. Mahalasamati helped me to, uh, taught me how to speak. <laughs> 